Good morning. My name is Heather Leeson. I'm with School of Data at Open Knowledge, and we're here today to talk all about what, how to get involved in School of Data, what's currently happening at School of Data, some of the activities, and some news and announcements, etc. So um, I'm joined by Milena Moran, uh, Program Director here at, at uh, School of Data, and Sam Leon, and Hi, we're going to share just different details about um, work that we've done and work that's coming up, but we also have some questions for you, so thanks so much. And Milena, tell us, give us an update on fellowships. 200 people, super honored yep. to read all those applications and to get to know all those folks. I want to I wanna, I wanna have them all, but we only have funding for some. But why don't you give us an update on fellowships? All right, so yeah, before before anything, I'd like to, to really thank from the bottom of my heart for everybody who, who applied to become a School of Data Fellow. We were completely overwhelmed by the applications. We received over 200 applications from all over the world, and all of them were of outstanding quality, so, so it was really, really hard to, 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 to try to make a decision. Um, and um, yeah, just to, just to give you a bit of an update of where we are right now, um, we've almost <laughs> made the decision. We're not there yet uh, because of how many applications we received uh, and, and the number of other restrictions. We are we still don't have the final decision. So we are we're asking everybody to bear with us one more week to uh, for the final announcement. We already started communicating communicating with some of you, but uh, but again for the final announcement of all the fellows, uh, please bear with us a bit more. Um, we we evaluated the applications in, in great detail. Uh, again, we we had over 200 applications, and we had uh, three evaluators for each application. We first of all we set out quite uh, thorough criteria on how to evaluate the applications. Uh, we looked at uh, first of all the overall quality of the application, the, the overall impression. We paid attention quite a lot to the teaching potential. So as you know, we're looking for people who can who can run school of data trainings in the local communities, and and we looked at uh, at a previous formal or informal experience in teaching, uh, and the passion for for teaching. Uh, we looked. Uh, we looked as well into into their skills and experience, um, and and here as well we were really overwhelmed by the quality of the application. I don't think we had even one application that was misplaced. You know, like sometimes when you evaluate applications for jobs or anything, sometimes you wonder, you know, what did this person do applying for this job? They're really not qualified. Instead, for this, every single person who applied was qualified to be a fellow. So it was really really hard uh, again to make a decision. So we, in terms of skills, we looked a bit of a com at a combination between technical skills, um, so some previous experience with data, uh, but also some some soft skills in terms of um, of people being able to 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 have some project management skills, or leadership skills, and so on. Um, and another criteria was the potential to support civil society organizations or journalists. Uh, that's our mission in School of Data. Our target audience is civil society organizations and, uh, and journalists. We had many people applying with quite an academic profile or uh, a profile that was a bit more towards uh, supporting government initiatives, which are all amazing things and we realize how much needed they are. Um, but again, we had to consider our main target audience, which are the civil society organizations and journalists. And of course, as promised, we looked at, uh, at the videos that people sent us. Uh, that was an amazing human touch for those of you who who managed to send us a video it was was beautiful to see people's faces and to hear their voices. Um, we looked at uh, the online profile of people, at their previous activities, and so on. So we really tried to dedicate a lot of uh, a lot of attention to each each single application, and we valued each single word you you wrote in the applications. Um, and as I said before, we'll uh, we'll keep you posted because we don't have yet a final decision. It's taking us a bit longer than expected to to really to really announce all the fellows. Um, but uh, but keep an eye on on School of Data, and you'll uh, you'll hear from us soon. And thanks so much, Melena. Uh, good morning, Muriel. Muriel's with um, School of Datos in Mexico. Did I mispronounce that horribly? Probably. Uh, <laughs> 
Um, she'll be sharing a little bit of update about what's happening in, in that part of the community. Um, the second thing that um, we wanted to do is that we're, we're preparing for something called Summer Camp and um, this is part of Open Knowledge Festival. So if you are coming to Berlin for Open Knowledge Festival, fantastic. Please do reach out to us. We have some plans for School of Data to be able to introduce, introduce each other and have conversations. But we're also doing something called Summer Camp. Um, only, but I think that it's important because it's the rest of the year. So I I, okay. I couldn't hear Heather the last uh, the last couple of uh, words. I was, Can you repeat please? I was absolutely. I was asking you about summer camp and asking if you could explain what we're doing at summer camp and how it's going to influence the rest of the year at School of Data. All right. So uh, the summer camp is really the biggest event we have this year in terms of uh, building more school of data, and really it's it's a bit internal oriented. If you want, we're going to bring together uh, all our strategic partners and all our fellows in Berlin uh, for two days right after the OK Festival from the 19th and 20th of uh, July. Uh, so even if it's a bit internal oriented, and but we'll we'll be talking a lot about strategies. We'll be talking a lot about how to get all these uh, 200 people who applied to become a School of Data Fellow and didn't make it through because of limited funding and limited uh, capacity really for us to, to handle so many people. But we'll be we'll be really talking to to our immediate community and really try to understand how we can support all these people to get involved. We realize that there's so much need for data skills. There's so much availability of people to teach these skills to their local communities. So we really need to capitalize on these. Um, so, uh, as I said, the 19th and 20th of July, right after the OK Festival in Berlin, around 40 people working directly with School of Data, so it's people like Marielle, who's uh, on this call from Escuela de Datos in Mexico, but also, also people from um, um, our local initiatives in Brazil, in Italy, Spain, France, and all our past and current fellows will be there. Uh, we'll be we'll be talking a lot about the future of School of Data, strategizing how we structure our community better, uh, how to invite others to join our community and really be part of our family and work with us. Um, and we'll be also doing a lot of skill shares. Uh, we'll be welcoming our new fellows. We'll be helping them to set objectives for the rest of the year, so that they can really understand what School of Data is and what their role is locally. Um, and we'll be communicating very often with you. We'll be trying to live blog from the event, we'll be trying to, to let people know and as, as, as soon as we have more strategies on how people can get involved, how uh, organizations can become local initiatives like Escuela de Datos in Mexico or in Brazil or Italy, uh, Greece and so on, uh, we'll, be, we'll be publishing that. So. Um, I just want to encourage everybody to keep an eye on School of Data, to write to us individually or on the, on the mailing list or however you prefer, please be in touch with us. We, from the bottom of our hearts, we want you to get involved and we want to make space for everybody and we'll be working hard to make that happen. So also we're, we're hoping that you'll stay in touch and uh, that we'll continue to collaborate in the future. Thank, thank, thanks, Melana. So I, um, I joined School of Data and I've been helping them um, kind of build up programming because as, as Melana said, we're really overwhelmed by how talented all of you are and everyone who applied and people who are just part of this community and network. And I think um, one of the things that I did say to a couple of the, um, the people that I spoke with and also the I wrote with um, over this time because I actually had the honor as well as Melina to read everybody's applications and just feel like I should go back to school like you did and, and make, make the school life a little stronger. But one thing I did say um, that I want to kind of enforce with every folks is that school data is stronger because of you and, um, and that you know we're co-building this kind of idea that we need more data sharers and more data teachers so that we can figure out how to have these skills and share it and kind of move the ball forward. And I think that the collaboration of making School of Data is really in all of our hands. And so while um, we have a limited group of people coming to School of Data summer camp, um, we've built out on, and have started to build out a framework of how to, um, what roles people can have. And also this is where we need your input, like what's valuable for you. Because we know that um, many of you have um, certain skills that you have and then you want to add on other skills 
skills. And so we're trying to think about how do we build modules for that? How do we build course modules for that? How do we have online programming for it? And so this is something we'll work at Scrolls at a summer camp, but we'll be asking you via the mailing list and the blog um, just to see um, and ask you to be our, um, our guide us because frankly um, you gave us so much responsibility when we read everything and and people who've been involved in the community um, you gave us responsibility to try and make sure that this space gets opened up for many people and if funders are listening um, what an awesome opportunity all these people deserve amazing jobs and fellowships that's 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 my uh, I'm a fan of everybody. That's why I work in community. So, um, so with that, um, we we have posted out some roles such as blog editors. I would like to train somebody to host these sessions instead of me hosting them. Sam, uh, just kidding. It's my colleague. Um, just have other people hosting it. Um, I think that having a host and doing this is is you know it's a little bit of a skill, but once you have it, then you're good to go. And I think always so so blog editors, community editors. There's um, Michael's always looking for people to help with code. We have a website that needs to be refurbished. That we have a website team that we're trying to build. There's localization and translation tasks. Um, I, I spoke to um, Ecole de Donne uh, in Quebec. Uh, I'm from Canada, and they were really interested in having far more school of data content in French. And so there's all these huge opportunities to be able to help people remix it in their own local language. So that's really that's really um, some of the community roles. Maybe maybe Mary. Ariel, you can tell us a little bit what's happening in in um, in, uh, in, school, uh, in in your side of the work, and I'm not going to mispronounce it, but just to, just to tell us like how your community's evolved, and then we'll turn to Sam, and he can tell us about that because I think those these both Sam and Muriel provide exam can provide examples of what kind of things community members can do. Muriel and I, for example, have gotten a couple of blog a guest blog post from folks who are doing amazing work, and so we've had that translated into Spanish and into English. So Muriel. Can you give us an update? Yes, uh, I'll try to be as brief as possible, but I want to give a little bit of context. Uh, I work in an organization from Mexico that does work with ICTs, change data all over Latin America. And so a problem we found was that whenever we wanted to find ways to inspire local organizations to adopt certain technology or tactic or use data in a way, we always have to draw from examples from Europe, for example, or from the US, as if nothing were happening in Latin America. And so when you come to an activist here and you say, uh, you know, this cool organization in the US is doing this, they will go, oh, that's great, however, that is the US that really cannot be done here. And so when you have people like La Nación, a newspaper in Argentina, doing major data projects, or you have organizations like this tiny student-run organization in Peru doing uh, expense, like government expense analysis, people say, OK, so maybe if, if it's done here, then we can do it too. So for us, School of Data was a great source of content on technical skills and also a good pretext, to call it that, to start collecting all these cases that are going undocumented and that would ultimately, I don't know, inspire other people to get started in their own data analysis, no matter what their background is. And so we started in that regard from scratch in terms of translating the website and trying to get new content from people who aren't us. On the other hand, we had some uh, background already on who is doing what in data in the in the in the continent. Uh, our challenge, for example, was uh, learning to work with people in Spain because really we've never worked in Spain before. So that's been that's been really interesting, and I guess there's a lot we can all share in in the meeting because as Heather said and Milena said too, it's not just Escuela that is doing great things. In Brazil they're doing great things, supporting people to learn MOOCs. If, I mean there are so many examples and, and I think it's it's awesome that we can all learn this together. Thank, thanks, 
Thanks so much, Muriel. I think um, that's really important. So we do have um, some instances of school data that happen around the world, and, and certainly at Social Tech, in, your, in your, the work that you're doing is very much in that space. And so we want to kind of honor the fact that we, we as, it, as we said, we, we are doing this with partners too because, frankly, I, I, I'm not from Mexico or Latin America. My Spanish is probably three words, which I need to pay for. I need to work on that myself. But, um, you know, we really definitely know that, that, that that everything's better if something's similar and it's in their backyard and they have those examples. So thank you so much for that. And I certainly have enjoyed um, getting to know through you uh, what's happening in Latin America. And it, it really, um, sometimes I find I can use those examples in Canada more because they're like, oh, well, you know, it's not as hard an ecosystem as the Canada and the United States are so different in terms of economies and just perspectives. So it's always nice to have another country to, a country or a series of countries to point to. Now, Sam, you've been doing um, quite a bit of work um, learning uh, using some of the school of data techniques and I know that you've been mentored in-house and I want to point out that you are staff but I think that I think your learning journey can kind of show people a little bit about that can you tell me about what you've learned this year and how you use school of data to learn that yeah no thank you Heather um, as Heather said I'm currently working with a NGO um, uh, called Global Witness um, and uh, I, I've, I've, I think what School of Data can do for people is really illustrated by my case. I mean, a, a year or so ago, I came with very limited um, data analysis skills, nothing, nothing beyond, say, um, being able to use Excel spreadsheets. And now, through some of the uh, tutorials that have been contributed by the community, but also some of the trainers, such as how to build a simple uh, SQL-like database for kind of lightweight data analysis, or just recommendations of tools through which to communicate and tell a narrative with data, such as kind of um, uh, the OKFN Labs uh, um, story mapping uh, tool. Um, I, I, I've, I've really come a long way, and it's been. Um, I'm now in the position where, um, which I think, which is one of the aims of School of Data, is that those people, as soon as they start taking on new skills, um, are able to uh, share them. And it's also it's kind of a kind of symbiotic process. As soon as you are um, find how easy it is to learn some of this stuff, you get an opportunity to uh, to share that back, and it reinforces uh, what you've already learnt. Um, so yeah, I mean, I found kind of uh, the School of Data resources, particularly the tutorials, the courses, the modules, invaluable. And I'd really strongly recommend anyone, and this is kind of the approach that I've taken, is that if they find, for instance, a really cool, cool course on uh, how to, you know, how to make a map or or how to produce a timeline, is to kind of um, Apply that to your own data. Um, you know, if you if you've got local data you're interested in, try a new analysis technique you've used in School of Data and share it back. You know, let um, share it back on a mailing list or on Twitter because that's what this is all about. You know, translating um, these sort of more generic sort of open source tools and techniques into you know stories um, that really matter. And we, and we, we want to hear that. We want to hear those stories, and I'm sure your colleagues um, across the world do. So yeah. Super. Th thanks, Sam. Yeah, I'm, I, sometimes I'm a little bit jealous of Sam's learning journey because I've been so focused on like how do I how do I help people be part of the community that I actually I'm missing some of the school day skills for sure. So I'm looking forward to skill shares both at summer camp, but also um, my my role there is really to figure out how do we take that kind of vibe of co-working together and put it online because not everyone can get to Berlin and they're not and, and it's closed session. So how do we make that more open and how do we how do we how do we bring people on that journey? I think Sam Sam has some examples. Ali's trying to join us, and Ali, I'm sorry, we keep trying. Um, Ali um, has done some amazing work in the Middle East, and he's gonna he he. Uh, shared previously a Skillshare online, um, and I just wanted to kind of ramp up what Sam said about you know if you have something that you've done and you want to share it, I would gladly blog it or work with you to blog it if you think that it's something that people can learn from. Um, the blog and, and any kind of work around that and sharing on the mailing list, those are places for you. Um, we've created these spaces and we want to kind of nurture them with your thoughts. Um, Kenneth from um, Kenneth from Kenneth has um, said a comment. He said, uh, Africa and Kenya in particular have several challenges related to data. They have a lot of data that can be very helpful, but frankly, the problems begin from the collection of data to the utilization. How can we inspire the collection and utilization of data given in the local context? That's one question. And two, are you looking at any projects direct directed at this difference um, with other countries? So. The, the second question was, 
are you looking at any projects directed at this difference with other countries? So um, maybe I'll start and then I'll turn to Milena for an answer. Does that sound okay? So um, in terms of data collection, I'm, I'm a mapper. Like I spent time in the crisis mappers community, Kenneth, and for anybody else who's listening. And one of the things that I think um, I've learned, and I used to work with Ushahidi in Kenya, is that citizen collected data is sometimes more trusted than government collected data. And so um, there's a bunch of ways that you can do that data collection. You can do an SMS program. You can do something like uh, open field maps, um, field papers, walking papers, and collect the data yourself and then upload it in. Um, there are some strategies about data collection that have been published. I don't know if we have a module on this, and that's where I'll turn to Sam and to Melaine. But I think that the collection of data, what I've learned from a gentleman from Nigeria named Chucks, who's a fantastic gentleman, um, he said that, you know, people will not be, and I know Nigeria and Kenya are completely different countries and different economies and everything, so please know that I, I get that. But what he said, um, I think, is relevant for anywhere in the world, and so correct me. Um, he said that people will not trust the data unless they're involved in the collection of data because they do not trust official organizations. And so as we think about data, I think there's something to be said about that. So um, anyway, do we, have, do we have any modules on data collection and how to collect data? Because it sounds like we might have to create one if we don't. Yeah, I think I think we've worked a lot so far with existing data. So we've uh, we focused a lot of our attention previously on how to analyze and how to communicate data, how to extract a story from an existing data set. Uh, but obviously, as we work more and more in the developing world, we realize that sometimes data is not there. Um, so we started working quite a lot on modules on how to collect data. Um, and how to, for example, how to request data from authorities because in some countries the data exists but it's not practically published by uh, by, by government. So we're we're looking both at all these methods of getting data. We've been we've been doing quite a lot of work on, for example, scraping methods. So if data exists but it's trapped in difficult formats like PDF, like websites, uh, and so on, we do have quite a lot of materials on our website on how to scrape data. Um, so what kind of tools, what kind of techniques you can use to, to get data out of difficult formats and, and then try to make sense of it. Um, but also what I wanted to say is that um, we, we, we definitely get that. We get that every country is different and every country needs a bit of a different approach, a different support. So we don't, uh, we don't think that we have uh, uh, the answers to everything and that's why, that's why we are trying to expand our international community with fellows, with initiatives like Social Week in Mexico, in Brazil and other countries because we want as much as possible to localize our efforts to work with uh, with people that understand the local realities, because if we try to pretend that from London and Berlin and uh, and so on, we really understand what's happening in Mexico, we'll be fooled. And and that's why we're working with a Mexican organization that knows Latin America, that uh, that works across the region, that understands the challenges, the real profound challenges uh, of of the country, and and can find some solutions that are appropriate. So that's why uh, in our fellowship to announce we wanted to focus on the developing world, we wanted to focus on countries and regions where um, this ecosystem is not mature as it is in Europe maybe or in, in, in um, America as Maria said at the beginning. We want to, 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 to work with the people that can work locally on local solutions. So maybe maybe Maria can, can say a bit more about that but uh, but that's what uh, what I wanted to add. So that's why we're, we're expanding a bit and trying to get as in as much as possible people from local communities that can can help us find a solution because we definitely don't have an out of the box solution but we want to work with you to find it. Yeah, I think data, like data and the concept of data is going to completely flip on its head because of people like Peter Yell and, and Kenneth and anybody else because the, the perception of how you collect data and how you use data in a different context, um, you're going to school us. It, we might we call it school of data but I feel like I'm learning more from you than you, I'm giving back so far. But anyway, Muriel, please, um, please, you wrote something here. Maybe you can share it with us, and then Sam will come to you. I, I agree with Heather. When when I came to School of Data first, I was a bit intimidated because I related it to big data, and mm -hmm. I didn't realize that there was all this storytelling potential, and just this potential to just look at the same information you have, even if it's not in spreadsheets. 
in a different way. And so I think that that's something that makes it really welcoming for anyone. That said, in, in Latin America, we had a hangout recently with data collectors from the continent, all of them on the NGO side, so not like official statisticians from the government or, or people like that. And they gave really good tips, so we will look into, into the hangout and see if it is worth subtitling the whole thing. And if so, we will share the link. And if not, we'll just grab the key points and we'll share those. That's fantastic. Thanks, Muriel. I really appreciate it. I think that, um, you know, um, I just think that there's all this opportunity for School of Data to be about what you need from School of Data. And I think you're going to be our teachers as much as we teach. Um, I think there's a, there's a mutual teaching society, if I can call it that. But Sam, over to you. Yeah, I'd, I'd sort of like to add to what's already been said um, and, and, where pe and obviously where people are struggling to find the data that they want to use to tell a story or to hold a given organization to account. I really think that that mentality kind of um, wanting to see this information freed up and made public is really in the spirit of kind of school of data um, and the open, open knowledge more widely and I think that we should share those stories amongst ourselves and with a wider audience like you know if there's a data set on, on transport or a data set on malnutrition that's missing within your locality or region let's talk about that and let's you know let's put pressure on the relevant agencies and organizations as well as taking steps to collect that data ourselves but I think that you know this is this is really kind of I'm at home with our ideas of being kind of information activists as well, and I really want to see that kind of aspect of School of Data really thrive, yeah. um, and that we're sharing those stories as well amongst ourselves to make sure we, you know, make make a better world for sort of, uh, you know, where information is um, much more freely available. Wonderful, wonderful. I think, it, yeah, I think, uh, I think this is super hard. What we're trying to do, we're trying to affect a different kind of change, and we're all trying to do it in different formats. That's why I call it community origami because you know we're trying to model it and everybody's model is just slightly different and that's absolutely fine and you know I personally I, I'm just gonna share probably overshare a little bit origami is my nemesis <laughs> I try so hard to do origami to do all the folding and I, I, I feel like if I can conquer origami I'll conquer anything and so I think that um, I don't want to say community is about conquering because that's so an awful way to frame it but more about like how do you do something that's really hard and, and learn it together I think that's something that we'll do so I will uh, definitely be walking around with origami trying to do it still but um, I do want to ask a really um, important question what can School of Data do um, and you know if you're watching this and you want to add me notes later or add it to the mailing list what can School of Data do next in terms of programming or Content to help you on your journey. Um, would you like more? Would you like online skill shares where you're learning how to do a map together, and you, we spend two hours on at Google Hangout? Like, what would you like from us? Um, and what kind of spaces can we create to make this um, more of a community space for you? As Melinda and I said, through through the summer camp, we're kind of a couple of people. Then we're going to throw it back to you and ask some more questions. So if you have ideas on what you would like, because this is your community, we're we're, we're learning while we go too. That would be most helpful. Does anybody here on the phone have any ideas that they'd like to state or things that they'd like to see? Just 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 kind of an idea zone. And Kenneth just added an extra comment about what we were talking about earlier about data collection and he, he plus ones on the, it's good to note that data ecosystems in every country are different, therefore each case must be looked at separately. Kenneth, absolutely. I, I think that, you know, we can look at examples, but as Marielle said, um, local, local trumps. And I will never understand, even though I worked with Kenyans for, for three years, I will never understand what it's like to work and live in Kenya, um, much like you. And so the perspective that you bring is, is so important. And I think, like I said, you're going to school us. It's going to be awesome. So, Milena, what kind of visions do you have for programming in the next year? Like, what kind of things do you think um, from, like, just in reading all these applications, and I know, Marielle, I think you read some too, and Sam, like, just understanding, like, to me, that was, like, an opportunity to look at it and go, wow, there's just so much potential here. I, I don't know, I'm not, sh like, I have an idea where to start, but what do you think? 
Sorry, I was talking, but I was muted. <laughs> um, yeah, lots, lots, lots of ideas. I think uh, I think it's a matter of uh, of discussing more and understanding how we can better utilize our resources to do so. But I think I think there are a lot of potential trainers out there who need a bit more support from us to really ramp up both their technical skills but also their more soft skills in terms of building a community and and, and really be in touch with uh, with people and, and and being organizers. Um, so I think we can we can definitely provide more support uh, with that. I think we already started with a series of hangouts, and I think we should continue doing so. We should continue um, sharing skills. We have, uh, we have lots of amazing skills in our community but, um, that uh, are, are amazing trainers. They know a lot about working with data, about um, both collecting, analyzing, finding stories and data, and so on. So I think more, more sharing skills for sure, uh, more opportunities for people to to formalize their their connection with School of Data. So we have the example of uh, of Social Peak, OKF Brazil, OKF Spain, Greece, and so on, who run local instances of School of Data. So they committed organizational time to run regular activities that benefit uh, civil society organizations and journalists in their local communities. So I think, uh, again, providing more support for organizations to take up this, this more regular uh, activity organizer role, um, I think that would be would be extremely important for School of Data as well to be able to reach more languages, to, to be able to work with more local communities and so on. So I think I think a bit of a growth in that sense will be is, is, is needed as we've seen from the from the applications. Uh, but we'll, we also have to be cautious a bit how fast we grow. Uh, uh, at, um, we, we obviously have limited capacity and we'll try, we'll try to, uh, to do things thoroughly. So if we do open up our doors, we'll try to support people. Um, and I think that's, uh, that's quite important. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll plan a growth, a sustainable growth, where we can, we can welcome people who want to get involved. We can have opportunities, concrete opportunities for them to get involved. But also be have the internal capacity to really provide the support they need for them to excel in what they do. I really think um, so. Just to add to Melina, I think um, you know I think that each of you can teach each other too. And so what well, we've created these spaces, um, we're also looking for you to kind of co-lead, right? So we, we'll set up some frameworks, and we're, at, after we come back from school today, summer camps are around July the twenty second or so. Um, you'll start to see a little bit more. Involved in, in ideas, but we didn't talk with each other this data question or what have you because there's always somebody who can co help. So rather than being led by us, um, we'll ask everyone to co lead in that sense because there's a chance for you to teach each other as best we can. And so we want to encourage that kind of co learning space as well. Um, knowing that we, again, as Melinda said, we have some capacity to do do some activities which we desperately want to do, but just just giving space for you to learn and to meet each other is, is the most important thing, you know, and, and doing things in a way that um, is healthy. We don't want to make any promises that we can't keep. I think is what Melinda is trying to point out is that so we're trying to like make it make it as flexible as possible. So. Let's see. So we've talked about fellowships. We talked about summer camp. We talked about upcoming stuff. Um, is there anything else that I've missed? Uh, there's a few people who've been trying to join. I'm so sorry. We tried to add you. I hopefully you get um, you get the detail that you needed. Um, if you have questions, I know Katty and Ali were trying to join us, and the, these folks have been um, supreme communicators and community leaders um, for a while, and we really wanted to share with you. Um, I'll certainly share a link with that. But does anybody have any closing remarks for us? Marielle, Sam. No, I do. Right. Sorry, okay, please I go ahead. Sam was no. going to say something. Go ahead, Marielle. Um, I think when we say, "Please come help," "Please uh, be part of this," in a way, a lot of people sort of. I mean, ideally, we would have like concrete calls to action and. This is where we need help with, and I think maybe that's where all of the communities of School of Data and School of Data in English will be in the next months. But before then, 
it's totally okay to say, hi, I want to learn. Uh, how can we make this a win-win? What can I learn with you and how can I help? I know that all the chapters are overflowing with work in Latin America. We're overflowing with work too. And we haven't found a way yet to structure those calls for action. But really, if you're interested in, in writing and learning whatever, doing an event, I think the whole community is going to be very welcoming of your, of your help. Uh -huh. And I think it will be a great way to learn anything. So don't don't hold back. Just tweet at us or send emails, whatever. I mean, really, it it will all be welcome. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Like we're at this kind of stage right now where, like for example, there's blog posts that I need help with. Right? There's just like I would like to hand over the social media account to a trusted fellow at some point. Right? Like you know, like that kind of stuff. Like there's there's always lots of things. So while we're building this, we certainly want to co-build it with you. And I think. Um, yeah, I think we're going to work on that more concrete list, and I've set up some models which I'm going to test on people to see if it's right. Uh, we don't want to set up something that's in vain, or it's vanity wear, if you will, but something that you want to use, because frankly, um, this is for you. So that's it for me. Milena, Sam, any closing remarks from you guys? No, I think nothing Nothing else to add, uh, uh, just that you're welcome to, to join us and we'll, uh, we'll as, as I think Marielle said it perfectly, while we're trying to really pinpoint and figure out the exact things we people can do, just be in touch in the meantime and express the interest, we'll definitely find the role for you. Super, super. Thanks so much, Mar Marielle, Melena, uh, Sam, and, and uh, Ellie, and Katty, and Kenneth, and the other folks who joined online in Germany. I really appreciate your time. Um, if you have questions, don't forget to contact us on the School of Data mailing list, and, uh, and uh, we'll, we will talk again soon. Okay, thanks, everybody.